Uh, hello, everyone. I am Mike Moore. I'm the director of software engineering for Business Integra and working as a cloud engineer for uh, the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. And I'm here with uh, Luca Peschke, who is the lead developer for Cloud Kitty to uh, show some of the features that were added to Cloud Kitty that we are looking forward to making use of. <clears throat> So a quick overview of the Goddard private cloud that we run. Uh, 80 compute nodes, about 1,300 cores, 7 terabytes of RAM, and our storage is running on a NetApp FAS 2650 with about 70 terabytes raw SSD and about 480 terabytes raw nearline SAS. We have 17 user projects and growing. And our billing is based on usage. And because of that, it's uh, tricky because we have different use cases. We have users running web apps and websites. Some of those are public facing, as well as computational heavy science workloads, like engineering CAD rendering, a lot of calculations, simulations. Uh, one user is looking for asteroids that might hit the Earth. So there's a mix of steady state and dynamic scaled billing requirements. Uh, the GPC I talked about in more detail in Berlin uh, in November last year. So what our users see today in Horizon, if you go into the rating module, uh, you can see the rating summary, which is just a uh, combined instance and storage cost for the current billing period. On day one of the month, that value resets to zero and climbs. So looking at that value, the users can't tell what's going on. Uh, on another screen, the reporting tab, you can see a pie chart that shows the source of charges by category, instance or storage in the current period. In our case, a very small amount of the rate is volume size. Everything is instances mostly. And then this line graph shows the cost per hour within the current period. It doesn't provide any useful information uh, other than in the current period, uh, which you can only you can't go back in time with this display. The CLI for Cloud Kitty offers more flexibility, but there are very few users who handle the costs that understand how to use the CLI. Uh, part of our migrating users over, we made a quick and dirty cost estimation tool. The user fills in the number of uh, VMs of a particular flavor. We also have storage farther down on the screen. It's not really helpful for forecasting unless you're doing steady state but uh, most of our users are coming from another environment and just want to know steady state if they ran what they had before, what it would cost. And one really cool thing, the quote that you generate can be shared as a link to anyone and it doesn't have to use a database, it's just a JSON string base 64 encoded in the URL. So the pieces that we're missing that uh, our users and management would like to have They'd like to be able to see the historical data, not just the current period. Uh, you know, look at the quarter, look at the year, that type of stuff. Uh, the ability to forecast into the future, if you make no changes, what your final bill would be for the period, or if you were to add a certain number of instances for a certain number of hours. And they'd also like a more a way to uh, query their data if there are more advanced users. And so I'm going to hand this over to Luca now to talk about all the cool stuff he's done. Thank you, Michael. Um, so, well, first of all, I will talk about uh, Horizon's future. So, uh, as you could see, uh, Horizon is a bit uh, sparse right now. Uh, well, for the future, we plan to, as uh, maybe you know, um, CloudKitty can be used outside of OpenStack now uh, with either Prometheus metrics or um, Modoska metrics. Um, anyway, we want to support all upcoming uh, OpenStack related CloudKitty features in Horizon but we don't want to reinvent a data visualiz uh, visualization tool. So there are things out there which are great at this, uh, like Grafana, which uh, most of you probably know, so it will be in the demo later. So Horizon will stay simple, and it's rather uh, a tool for admins uh, to create their rating rules and uh, get a quick overview of the cloud. Now about the existing solutions in Stein, uh, which have been added uh, recently. First thing is the InfluxDB storage driver. So you can directly plug a Grafana dashboard on CloudKitty's InfluxDB storage backend. Um, and there will probably be a second uh, CloudKitty storage driver. So 
it isn't fixed for now, but it will probably be uh, InfluxDB. So you would have Grafana, um, Kibana to visualize your data. So we don't want to put this into Horizon. And uh, for users who use CloudKitty outside of OpenStack, we plan to add a graphical client. So this one might uh, contain more advanced charts and um, maybe so some kind of way to visualize your data. Not as complex as Grafana, but still something for people who don't want to bother with uh, Grafana and InfluxDB combination. So now, let's switch to the demo. Uh, first, I will show you the small changes with it into Horizon for the Stein release. So, yep. The charts uh, changed a little bit, they were refreshed, uh, but the more important thing is for users, you get a um, parametric split up view um, for your cloud usage. So it's still the current month. Um, it's not possible to select the time period because that's something that's quite tedious to implement and maintain in Horizon. And for admins, there is also a total cloud report. So you get a quick summary for each project, and by clicking on a specific project, you'll get the same split up uh, parametric view. Now to Grafana. So um, this is a basic example. I just added three simple charts. Um, so they all apply to the whole cloud. So the first one is a cost per metric for the current month, well, or for the period you specify at the top. So that's one of the first problems uh, Michael encountered, so choosing the period for which you want to visualize your data. So, well, you know Grafana, yep, you can just visualize any week you want. Um, here you have the same data as here, but in a pie chart. And what I wanted to show you is how to quickly, uh, quickly add a panel showing the resource type cons uh, consumption for one specific tenant. So you basically just query CloudKitty's InfluxDB backend, filter on a variable, which would be the project ID variable, which can be selected here. Select the price, uh, do a sum. Fill it and just group it by type. And bam, you quickly have a, a summary for the current project. And again, you can select the project on the top and you easily get uh, pretty much anything you want. Um, InfluxDB's query language, it's much more complete than what we could provide through an API. So we figured out this was the best way to allow admins um, to provide their users data, uh, which can be easily manipulated and uh, visualized. Thank you very much. Do you have any question? Okay, thanks for coming to our talk.